Ha, uh, okay, got it. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's great to see you all. Um, we're trying to figure out all the logistics of sharing. sharing. As you can see, uh, we are looking at Ornamentation Bootcamp day one. And as you can see, David, uh, Derek is on my screen leaning in. We are both in Pretoria. Uh, today we are uh, streaming, Zooming live from our Airbnb here in Pretoria, since we're just getting ready for our in-person work with students. Um, tomorrow we will be at the University of Pretoria. And then the day after that, we are making a day trip away from Pretoria to be at the University of Potchefstroom. Northwest hope... University. Northwest University, that's correct, which is in Potchefstroom. And uh, so the rest of the ornamentation bootcamp will come from there. So let's jump right in. Uh, for those of you who have been bar classing with us, uh, we are going to move around a little in August to make sure that these uh, topics, specific topics are covered and that new people who are joining us can catch up and particularly the students and singers we are going to be working with in the next two months will have a good um, kind of background introduction to the work we do. Um, so today we are in the Vakai project at the chapter that deals with fast and vigorous turns. So we've already dealt with turns. And then the next chapter, which is Apogitoras in practice. And so we thought this is a good opportunity to jump into ornamentation uh, because at the Vakai project, now we have been through all of the building blocks of ornamentation, which we call units of pitches. So we're going to start today's slideshow with a little review of those things. Uh, so if you already know everything, uh, just this is review. If this is new to you, please type in the chat if you have any questions. If there is something that you want us to clarify, please talk to us. Okay, so the building blocks of ornamentation, what we call units of pitches that we have discovered in Vakai over the last maybe two or three weeks, um, consist of passing tones, scales. So we've already done done and we will look a little at that as a review just to see what are passing tones. Apogatoras and achakatoras, we will review what they are, how to tell them apart. Mordents, that is basically upper and lower neighbors. And then the four and five note turns, which brings us to where we are um, in the book at the moment. Why is it important to think about this as building blocks of ornamentation? Because as we have discovered before, these are the little um, byways and alleys around pitches that your voice can take. Today, since we are not at a piano, though we have a fabulous electronic piano here, which Derek is very good at playing, um, we are basically really going to explore with our voices what these little units of pitches are, right? So to remind you, we say that we are trying to hear these um, building blocks as one idea. So instead of one note at a time, we're trying to hear three, four, five notes as a unit. It's important for us to feel that in our throats and not just to understand it as um, a kind of compositional exercise because you are going to try and use these building blocks to write ornamentation for your own arias. And that is what we are going to do uh, in the next three days. So first, we're going to look little review of passing tones or scales. So as I said, this is what we find in Vakai lesson seven, Koma il Kandore. What is it we see in that lesson? We see passing tones as non core tones that fill the space between consonant pitches or core tones on strong beats. So the example you see here is a famous example of Mozart ornamenting himself in the duet between Pamina and Papageno, right? And so Derek will play. Oops. And if you. Turns fill, into. I 
I don't know how he does that. We will, at, at the end of the session, we will, oh, Derek will this, hold it up. This is the keyboard. This is our keyboard that, oops, and this is the lowest note and the highest notes. There you have it. So, there, there we go. go. So, uh, it is, you see passing tones in compositions, and I think this is an important thing for us to get our heads around. When we talk about these units of pitches, it's not just things that you can add to music, it's things that composers add to the skeleton um, to uh, compose, right? And so if we look at Comel Candore in that basic sense, we have, or a more, more fully fledged skeleton, right? And that fills into Right, so the G and the C are passing tones between the core tones G, B, and D. Does this seem very pedantic and simple? Yes, maybe, but as a basic idea, it's very important to head your, get your head around the fact that if you want to be successful at writing ornamentation, you need to see harmony and you need to see where the harmony notes are and where the non-core tones are. And when we're talking about passing tones, we're talking about dissonant pitches, that is, they are not part of the chord, but they don't pull attention to themselves because they are just really there as filler between the chord tones, okay? Nothing in the chat, everybody happy. Moving right along to the mother of all ornaments, which is the appoggiatura. What is the appoggiatura? As a melodic ornament, the appoggiatura is a dissonant pitch on a strong beat. So it's the same pitches that you would have seen in, as in passing tones, but you find them on the strong beat and it resolves to a consonant pitch. The appoggiatura leans and is played longer than its resolution. In musical time, it is a true space hog and occupies as much time as it possibly can. It's super important in all the music that you look at on a daily basis to figure out what is consonant and what is dissonant. Just like we see in Bimenern, appoggiatures can be incorporated into written melodic lines. So the first thing to do is to be able to see how composers use them. They are still appoggiatures though, right? The fact that they're ornamental doesn't mean that they are not used by composers. They very much do. They still lean, they still resolve. And what are some examples of that? Sorry, let me just see. Oops, I went to the wrong screen. Here we go. The appoggiatura. So here we see Fuggi Crurele Fuggi. Uh, this is there, some of these we picked from repertoire that we have been working on in the past two weeks. This is the duet between Anna and Ottavio. You will see on Anchio the B and the A. That is a composed, written out appoggiatura. Derek will play. So that appoggiatura we find both in the voice and in the in the string section, and it is composed. And then you see in the second score, you will see the the appoggiatura indicated by a small note is the same thing. Here you will see it is not in the orchestra, which presumably is why it is not written out as a big note, but it sounds exactly the same and has the same effect. And note that even though the note is written as an eighth note, that does not matter. It is still longer than the resolution. Also worth mentioning what happens in measure 68, which is another vocal appoggiatura, but it's harmonized in the orchestra. So it follows a little bit differently. Right, you see that E on Dio, it still feels like an appoggiatura and it has what we can call a... It's like a appoggiatura chord around it. Okay, so that's one of the ways we see the appoggiatura in written out music. Here we see another example. This is Rossini, uh, uh, Donizetti, sorry, Donizetti from Lucia. Um, and you see this kind of train of appoggiaturas, uh, or you can call them suspensions, right? The, the, the consonant note is suspended, and we see that a lot. Always remember that dissonance is what creates um, excitement in music, and that has always been the case. That was the case 
um, for Bach, who is a very chromatic composer, and that is true for the appoggiatura in music that otherwise can seem very consonant, and this is particularly true to see in classical music. What? So separarci o mai conviene o parole a me funesta becomes. Separarci o mai conviene o parole a me funesta. This was put here for Patricia, who's in the call. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Patricia. Uh, also note that Derek sang an appoggiatura on funesta. Even though it's written to A flats, there is still going to be a appoggiatura. We're going to review the prosodic appoggiatura in just a hot second, right? So you can feel immediately if we just sing the consonant scale coming down, we don't have imbued as much emotion, as much um, interest as when we involve all of those uh, dot dissonances. So here we have one more example. This is Fiordeligi and Ferrando. So we see a question of Derek. What is this? Derek is going to play like this line. And I want to see in the chat somebody explain what is that E? What would you imagine this is? I'm going to. Again, just to make a side note, Ravizarmi is going to have an appoggiatura. We will come to the reason behind that. But how do you explain that E? A, tell me in the chat, is it a core tone or not a core tone? Fastest finger, who wants to be a millionaire? Hint, hint. The better place for me to put the arrow would have been on the previous E. On the previous E. Open. It's a core tone, exactly. It is a core tone. When we hear it, tom, pom, 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 it feels exactly the same as an appoggiatura because you have this Zeufzer feeling, and this often happens with this kind of, I'm putting in the chat, the German word Zeufzer, which very often goes in conjunction with the appoggiatura. We feel this kind of stress of the, the sighing, the dissonant to the consonant, but that uh, effect can be had also between consonant pitches. That's... Yeah. We'll spend a lot of time this week talking about the skeleton and it will get even more uh, harder to find, less transparent than this, but if the skeleton of this is Joy, You can make an argument for joy, either one. But the important thing is that you realize that even though it fills out the line, this is not an appoggiatura because it's what? A chord tone. Correct. Mundo. Okay. And then another thing to talk about this, um, we see here Mozart writing. A, an appoggiatura with a quarter note value, right? But because of the rhythmic, rhythmic uh, pattern that happens in this duet from Così, people, everyone, almost everyone sings, there would be nothing wrong with singing, if you wanted to, but most people keep that appoggiatura in, Right, because we feel that same uh, sing, sing, Derek. Yeah, hey, Caitlin, it's good to see you. Not see you. Uh, we'll we'll hang out maybe afterwards with all of our friends who wants to say hi. Yeah. Um, okay, so we are going to take a little detour to talk about the appoggiatura's double duty. Um, because there is very often confusion about the difference between the prosodic appoggiatura and the appoggiatura as an ornament. So we're just doing a quick review about what the prosodic appoggiatura is and that results from poetic stress. It is usually not written. We already saw like four of them, the ones that Derek sang, but that was not notated. And Derek is going to explain using uh, this poem, I make Dove Trascorsi, just a little from a poetic perspective, how the appoggiatura um, comes to be from a poetic perspective. Yeah, so in Italian music, often we will see two equal notes written at the ends of lines or even in lines that do not represent two equal syllables. 
Um, if you've been with us or if you followed our bar class stories or want to join us for the rest of the week or forever, um, we will talk a lot about why that is. And it's because of preserving the clarity of the harmony between the bass and the melody is why the dissonant note wasn't written. Um, but every time we see two equal notes with that bass, one of them will be changed at the end of a line or if you pause. So in the poem, if you want to read it with me on mute, or if you just want to listen, find all the long syllables. Aime, dove trascorsi, ove mi spinse un delirio d'amor. Sposa, Euridice, Euridice, consorte, a più non vive, la chiamo in van, misero me, la perro e di nuovo e per sempre, o legge, O morte. And now we'll look at a page from Cori, uh, Domenico Cori. He was a contemporary of Mozart. He published a thing called uh, Singer's Preceptor, and then also selections of songs and duets from operas in the highest esteem. He also um, published a bunch of folk songs and other things from the time. But here we see um, where Cori writes in 1780, I think. The first line is the recitative in Orfeo by Gluck original manner, so how it's written in the score, and then the proper manner, i.e. how it should be sung. So what we see is sposa, Euridice, Euridice, consorte, a più non vive la chiamo in van. And that is the line that you will see in your Berenreiter score. That's the line you'll see in your anthology, wherever you find it, right? But Corri tells us that in 1780, the proper manner was to sing Sposa, Euridice, Euridice, Consorte. So we've already changed all of these equal notes to upper quadraturas. Then you see this little ornament, A più non vive, adding a, an even not necessary, non-required quadratura. Non vive, la chiamo, also not required, in van. Next slide. So this is what you will see in the Baron Rider score versus the same page from Corri. So we just went through these first four. Then we have, a più non vive, la chiamo, la chiamo in van, la chiamo in van. Next line. Misero me la perdo, perdo. Here we have misero me la perdo. E di nuovo e per sempre. So we can go through all of them, but you see every time there's a break, every time that there is a um, a pause or the end of a poetic line, we have an apportatura. So, and this whole thing is on our website of this markup and which you can't see me moving my cursor. Right. <laughs> like this markup and it's also in the Vakai book. Right. So, uh, just to recap that, the Apoggiatura double duty, you can of course hear that when the prosodic Apoggiatura is employed, and that is to clarify the prosody, the stresses of the prosody, of course it has a melodic effect. It, and the melodic effect it has is one of dissonance. And that's why we say if we do not add these compulsory dissonances, we end up with music that sounds extremely consonant when in fact it was not planned it's, to be. And it's a good reminder that um, in music, this also applies. Um, it's not, I can't think of it right now, but we did the opening duet from Noce, where Susanna repeats twice the same figure that ends with bump, bump, written. And our Susanna, who's fabulous, just came off the roll and she said, well, I did it the second time. But that doesn't work because this is a prosodic apportatura required by the poetry, and therefore it can't be an ornament, right? So everybody raise your right hand and say, the prosodic apportatura is not an ornament, okay? <laughs> right, it's super important to understand that when, some, when the apportatura must happen because of prosodic reasons, it is not optional. It is, uh, it is, a, uh, it is required by the rules of the prosodic apportatura. Uh, yes, mostly apportaturas are from above. Please do not fall into the 
uh, trap of thinking that if the preceding note is lower, the appoggiatura should be from below. That is a, that is somewhat a, re, a thing that happens because people are kind of like against this idea of always singing this upper appoggiatura. But that is how the Italian language works, right? Before we go on from appoggiaturas into attraccatura, maybe we had a great question in the chat about the word grace notes. Both of them are grace notes. Grace, yes, grace notes um, are kind of, uh, grace notes are kind of, a, in many ways, the English version of what Italians sometimes call gruppetti, but that in itself is also confusing because some theorists will have a specific use for the word gruppetti. Some theorists will call Morden's gruppetti, some will call Turn's gruppetti. In, in some way, there are different ideas, right? People say anything that is kind of written as small notes, they think is yeah, grace notes. I would notes. say 90% of the time, people that I hear to, un, unless they're musicologists, refer to grace notes, they mean any note that's written small, right? Which as we've looked, it can either be long, which means it's an appoggiatura, which means that it's dissonant, or an attraccatura, it's dissonant and it takes time, and a chakatura, which we're about to discuss. Right. And this is going to be extremely uh, important because this idea that ornamental pitch pitches are little pitches, that they happen fast, is very confusing. Something, a grace note, technically speaking, right, should be something that graces the music, or Corey will say it gives grace to the line. And those notes are neither necessarily fast, nor dissonant, nor consonant. They can have many different uh, looks. And when we look at the achakatura, that is when we're going to really see this in play. What is more important to know than anything else is what harmony you are in. There is no way to understand what it is you're looking at if you don't look at your harmony. You cannot just look at the vocal line. Okay, so the achakatura is crushed into the note it embellishes. And we say uh, this is very much review. We just did this a couple of weeks ago with people in bar class. It occupies the same rhythmic space as the big note. Please don't ask whether it's on or before the beat because it's so fast. It is lives in the same house. It doesn't matter if it's before or after. If you do it right, it does not matter. So an example here is Suanquillo la virtu magica. We do not want to hear that's definitely not the right key. Um, we lost our piano. Right. Is that E flat before or after the beat? Nobody knows. The important thing, and we don't even hear it as a very, uh, as a specific pitch. We hear it only, oh, are we a half turn off? Somebody says we're a half turn off. We must have or, pressed. Are we on the right? Is this B flat? <laughs> Maybe we transpose that thing transposes. Um, oh, she was just uh, she was in 415. Oh, she was in 415. OK, so here we go. Important again. Why is it important now to understand this? Because when you add ornaments, you have to know what are you going to do? Are you going to are you adding an appoggiatura? What are you doing? Right. So here we have a great example of the Achakatura embellishing the Apoggiatura. This is Adina, um, and she is not, you can see that that little note, and in this case, you will see that it has a flag through it. And so some people will be like, this is not important to know your harmony because that flag tells me it's an Achakatura. But as you will see in a, in a further, in a later slide, that's not necessarily true. In this case, the F that the G um, graces, is a non-harmony note, but the G graces it. And it is thus an acciacatura to an appoggiatura. So you hear, this is the chord. Non, but with the, uh, without the acciacatura, it sounds like non si canti. With acciacatura, non si canti, non si canti. It doesn't occupy time, yeah? And it's also canon. No, that's too long. Canon si kanji. Next one. Qui dove tutti tamano. So already you see the chord underneath it is C major with squiggly bits in the right hand of the accompaniment, but it doesn't change the harmony. Qui dove tutti. 
So this is also uh, for those of you who have been into poetry with us and Derek, right, is interesting because you're not in a recitative, you are in uh, aria, but you will see that in fact, that is also a prosodic moment, right? Because the poem is not ke non si kanju, but ke non si kanju di and quidove tutti damano. So it makes perfect sense also from a poetic perspective why those notes are dissonant. They carry the stress both poetically and um, musically. So here is an example of notes that are written as small notes, but they are appoggiatoras because they are dissonant. Uh, so you will always, very often, because of these rules of not writing out big notes that are dissonant in order not to confuse the harpsichord player or the keyboard player or the continuo group, if that doesn't make sense, we will stay on and answer questions about that. But that is the reason that very often the dissonant note is notated as a small, small pitch, so it doesn't pull attention to itself, even though that is the pitch that it has to be. Uh, Derek will quickly look so at a see, couple of these, maybe. You see the first one here, and remember that time is not real. That's because we opened it okay. way before this. Right. Rochelle's looking at a time clock of how okay. long we've been going. So you see in this four note group here, ba -da 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 -dum -bum, they will always write the note that belongs to the chord underneath it bigger. And so it's not da -dum -bum -bum, bram -ba -da -da, you know. Da dum bum bum, ba da 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 dum bum bum. Right, that four note thing. The next example um, is from Donanna. Um, uh, or sai se no rimira di sangue. Those of you who have sung senza la mabile in vacai, you remember how this appoggiatura re replaces the main note because the next note here is still an E. So rather than singing Rimira di sangue, probably better, and Baronrider agrees up in this little uh, suggestion to sing Rimira di sangue. Batti, 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 o bel masetto, la tua povera. Appoggiatura. But why? Because this C is in the harmony, so it needs an appoggiatura. It, we don't get the same effect of povera celina. It's not as satisfying as povera celina. Um, lastly, Ferrando in Unara. Zogno non ha bisogno. The F sharp does not belong in an E major chord, yeah? Bisogno non ha. Again, because the next note is the same, it repeats the entire first pitch. So B so or replaces. It replaces the E entirely. So B so no no na B so no no na. Great. Um this is what we do. We spend the hours trying to find all the examples. All the examples, <laughs> right. So this is a good uh, we have looked at this once before, but uh, as review and for new people Appoggiatura or acciaccatura. You will see that these are written in the same way. They're written as small notes. There are no flags through it. The first two examples are appoggiaturas. We know that because they are dissonant. And then in the next example, you will see that, that the C is functioning as an appoggiatura. It is a big note. It is written out. It is composed. The little note that graces it thus cannot also be an appoggiatura. It is an acciaccatura, even though it doesn't have a flag through it. Uh, I don't know. Do we need to? Shall we just sing this yeah. quickly as well? So... We have frisch und wunderhell. Ich weiß nicht, wie mir wurde. So here we have above a B major chord. We have C natural. It's dissonant, so it takes time and replaces the note. Ich weiß nicht, wie mir wurde. Above this G sharp diminished chord in second inversion, we have an A. Replaces the G sharp, and so we have. Each and blah 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 blah. End of the song, almost at the end of the song, we have Du hast mit deinem Rauschen mir ganz berauscht den Sinn. So ignore the bass because it's just in octaves with the melody. The chord 
is B major, yeah? With this appoggiatura. Mir ganz berauscht in Sinn. So the D here is in a chakatura. Mir ganz berauscht in Sinn. Just going to check with Eric, the waiting room is off, right? Yeah. Okay. Great. Fantastic. So this is the end of appoggiatura and chakatura, which is really the one of the most important parts of understanding how dissonance is bring brings itself into music both from a melodic perspective and a text perspective um in an interesting way the mordant the four note and the five note turns which are the next units of pitches that we have to review in order to start practicing it with our voices and to understand how to wield these little weapons in our ornamentation um we find in a very interesting way in Garcia's Apoggiatura variations. And uh, many of you have seen this before, but we have some examples coming up how to play with it in a different way. Um, this little uh, section from Garcia's treatise uh, is showing you how two repeated notes can be varied in other ways than just a simple Apoggiatura. So two Cs can become or right but there are many other things that it can do and when we look at all of those we see these gruppetti grace notes little groups of notes two three sometimes even more when you look at the end of the line and when we start to take them apart we start to see that they in fact can be explained in many ways in what we call today mordants and turns mordants quite simply an upper and lower note to the main note so instead of this we see or you can use those upper and lower notes and if we use them in different combinations uh, the, the fourth one in that is what we use what we call the schleifer which is created by putting a new harmony note and then sliding to the new note the very next one you will see already what we now call turns or the turn and the inverted turn um, and so we feel we find that this these ways of changing around um, what two repeated notes are will give us many options and this really is i would i almost want to say 90 percent of what you will use when you write ornamentation will be on these next two little slides and we use vadoro pupille here as an example because it is an aria that is known for actually having repeated notes so if you think about it from a prosodic appoggiatura uh, uh, from a prosodic perspective the stresses in the poem are vadoro pupille saette d'amore and you will hear that all of those stressed syllables are in fact followed by unstressed syllables when when you look at the skeleton are two repeated notes vadoro pupille saette d'amore but Handel is varying it by one of these appoggiatura substitutes that you see um, explained by Garcia. That is, by putting that lower mordant, that lower neighbor note in there, he is varying the first beat enough that it uh, now has a stress that does not belong to the second note. And so if many, many singers sing Varoro Pupile, it is a famous aria for young singers to, to, to sing. It is a da capo aria. How do you vary that? By understanding that all of these um, different variations of Garcia's are possible. And so what we often do is we ask people to do all of them uh, one of them at a time instead of trying to wield all of this so the first one we have is like we and we color code them right people who know us know know the colors for ornaments we have dark red for lower and upper upper uh, lower and upper mordants um vadoro pupile which is what handle has which is why i put those notes in dark red but then if we put a turn between those notes you can have Vadoro Pupile Saete d'Amore. You can literally put a turn on all of those notes, um, including 
Que vostre favile son la di da da. So as an exercise, you can sing all through Vadore Pupille, singing turns or inverted turns. Vadore Pupille. So I didn't write all of them all the time, but I make all of them happen here. Here's the Schleifer. Vadore, Vadore. Right, you see how those are completely interchangeable. You can use a simple appoggiatura, so you could sing saete instead of or saete, and you can vary it saete da mo more. Right, this is a simple appoggiatura with a variation, escape tone. Or upper and lower appoggiatura, yeah? Note for the studio audience. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, the, the purpose is not to do all of them in real life, but the purpose is to practice. Right. All Don't of expect them. to be able to combine them if you can't hear and do it on every note. The most important, and we are going to do this in practice with Derek in a hot second. The most important thing to understand about ornamentation is that if you try to be too artistic too soon you always feel that you're not good at it but if you learn to recognize all of the places where all of them can go then you're like a cook who has all of the ingredients in the kitchen and you can make banana pudding whenever you want to make it or you can make like a stew whenever you want to make it because you'll have everything in the pantry um if you if you don't have all of these tools at your disposal, life becomes much more complicated. Um, we put a quick slide here about Garcia just to pull your attention. If there is only one treatise you read, it should be Garcia. Um, it is the most often quoted treatise. I'm going to run quickly through these. These are slides that many of our people have seen before. This is an organization of that chart of Garcia's to really explain what is mordant like, what is turn like, and how they relate to the Vakai lessons that we have been singing, right? Why do we preach on Vakai so often? Because Vakai teaches you to sing all of these units of pitches fluidly in your voice. And these are the same things you're going to use to ornament. Um, I'm going to go through this quickly as well. One of the exercises that we do in Vakai is to take the appoggiatura uh, lesson that is senza la mavile and vary the appoggiaturas. So if you want to start getting good at this, if you have the Garcia list and you take something that is written with a lot of appoggiaturas already but you try to vary them i'm not going to play them because i want us to have time to practice and some of you have seen this before um you can vary every appoggiatura and all of a sudden you start to feel like a composer as you do that okay now here are some appoggiatura games to play then oh wait what do Wait, didn't we just have this? No. Oh, no. We... Well, this is talking about... Go... Well, if you wanted to write the whole thing. <laughs> if, I, if we wanted to write the whole thing, which we're not going to do right now. Sorry, this slide showed, like, threw me for a little loop. Um, one thing about turns that we have uh, not discussed in detail is what the difference between the five and the four note turn is and this is going to be the last part of talking before you're going to sing with Derek that is the five note turn is the classic turn which is constructed by the main note the note that is being ornamented an upper neighbor back to the main note the lower neighbor and back to the main note and if you invert that process you have an inverted turn so the turn so say we start on f is right the inverted turn of the same thing just goes down first if we're in f major so we have bum, the five note turn the five note turn on g dum, ba, da, usually with a chromatic lower neighbor what happens when we lose one of the notes of the first of the turn is either that the first note disappears, which is on the left side of your screen, 
and da 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 dum becomes da dum. Still a turnaround F, the note that happens twice. Or the last note disappears as it's on the right side of your screen, and we have da 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 dum. Still a turnaround, the note that is repeated. Da 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 dum ba da 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 dum. Yeah. So those four note turns have either a missing first note, in which case the first note is dissonant. You'll see it's not on the line. If the first, if the four note turn gets to four notes by omitting the last note, it is because the first note is still consonant, right? So this makes a big difference when we use it in ornamentation if we're going to omit that note because which is harder to find, the consonant or the dissonant pitch? The dissonant one, yeah? Right, and um, why is why is it so important to really study the four note turn on its own? Because the the nature of uh, music and music notation that write, that cuts one apple in two and then each half is that it breaks down into one, two, four, eight, right? Unless we have triplets or that funky thing called a quintuplet. So by cutting off one of the notes of the five note turn, it can fit neatly into a four sixty note group that works great um, for us when we are singing coloratura. Um, so what we are going to do now is to play games and I don't know Derek how easy is it for you to see the group because what we like to do now is to ask people to actively participate and try to sing on Vadoro Pupille Saete d'Amore and we find this skeleton um, and you can sing any of these things do you want the next slide or do you want this one for um, practice do you want to practice with the next slide and then go back Up or just you. do up to you. I was expecting the next slide first. Okay, so let's do the next slide. This is first. the joy of collaboration. <laughs> well, this slideshow has gone through many different. Exactly. Different and if you've been with things. us, you've seen this. Good. So if you just want to sing on ah. On mute, everybody can sing together and sing. Ready? And. And now, if I were going to sing a five note turn, so that means I'm gonna have what five pitches? The upper, back to the same note, and back down on that. I'll sing the first measure for you. Ah, everybody repeat that with me and ah, good now let's keep going ah, good who wants to try that kelly are you up for trying it? Um, sure. I don't know how good it's going to be, but we'll try it. It will be great no matter what happens. I think I got off there. Oh, you're, you're good. Da, 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 da. Oh, oh, oh. Right. Wait, where's the G? <laughs> I lost it. Just sing one more time through the skeleton. No, I got off. Um, okay, one time sing for us the entire skeleton and all the five note turns after it. Okay. Good. I'm going to stop you because we know you and it'll help your ear if you sing really legato. Okay, yeah. Yes, 
That middle voice sounds so good. Now, all the five note turns. Good, very good, brava, good. Now, can you sing the next line, which is just the upper quadraturas, right? So it's yeah. what you found by going ba da 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 ba da 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 So you've sung all those notes, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. If you just sing the upper quadraturas, there's F major. Oh, you're doing a great job. I meant with okay, yeah. just the opportunity of those five note turns, but with the original <laughs> notes too. You made it even harder. Good job. <laughs> Just the skeleton, just seeing the skeleton in that measure. Da 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 bum bum. Good. Now all the the skeleton, the skeleton with the portraitures. Wait, sorry. This is the last. That, that is right. Yeah, just the last. Good. So a helpful thing. Brava, Kelly. That was great. Rachel, are you up for singing? So a helpful yes. thing, I'm going to have Rachel do the in-between exercise of that, which is to sing the skeleton note first and then the upper note, which is the first half of what? The five note turn. Yeah. So if you sing ba da dum ba da dum ba da 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 So sing that upper quadratura as the middle note of a triplet. Yeah? Okay. Good. Philadelphia is coming in strong today. Yay! Good. <laughs> There we go. I just want to interrupt one second and say sometimes people wonder why we like make people sing and why we can just take a pencil out and write. And while I'm a big proponent of writing down the ornamentation that you imagine, it's it makes a real difference if as a singer you can see notes and start to see stuff around it, ornamental stuff around it, because that is where your imagination starts to um, take hold, like as a singer, right? And right. not just and a it composer. also makes a bunch of ink on the page. Like if you saw the last line on this page, that's a lot of ink. That's a lot of notes, but it's not actually a lot of music because it is dumb, it's just the four note turn. Good, but let's stick with this now. Rachel, same thing, but now just the upper, upper apportraturas. So. Good. Now, can you do the same thing and sing the turn starting on the upper portrait? So the last line, yeah? So, um, the last line. Do you want to sing the five note turn first? So, da 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 but it depends on each person and what makes sense to you the most orally. Uh, and, you know, we've done this so many times with different people that it, there's almost no order to put it in. It's kind of like it can go in any order. So sing one time what uh, Kelly did and sing the five note turns.
But you notice sometimes your ear led you to sing ba da dum ba da a chromatic mm -hmm. under neighbor with a half step, and sometimes you sing whole steps. Usually, I would say 97% of the time, this figure happens with chromatic upper neighbors. So you, what, whether it's a whole step above or a half step above, the bottom note is usually a half step. So da 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 ba da. See if you can do it again and aim for a half step on the lower interval. Okay. Good, gorgeous. Now, last line of the page. Same thing, two clicks faster. Good, good. So does anybody remember when uh, Larry Brownlee did that uh, color tour challenge? Yeah. We wanted to post because it was a basta mi tormento. It's this kind of pattern. It's like if we had posted just the skeleton, a lot of those recordings would have come a lot quicker. Yeah. So very good. If you're wondering why there's a silly tin man on the thing, is because it to me sounds like the upper portatura where da 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 sounds like it with the thoughts I'd be thinking I. It'd be another Lincoln if I only had a brain. <laughs> Good. Next slide. Great job, Rachel and Kelly. So, uh, a little sidebar for this game. Uh, this is what we call the units of pitches uh, merry-go-round, right? And here you will see passing tones, turns, lower mordants or lower neighbor tones, flips, which is the one thing that is not exactly a... a you know, related to appoggiaturas, right? It's this kind of idea of thirds, but we find them a lot in um, in coloratura writing, uh, inverted turns and more upper mordens, upper neighbor tones. Um, so the game here to play then is to try instead of just writing them, sing them and sing them maybe in different combinations. So this is all part of the game of seeing using everything in different ways and then mixing it up. Uh, sidebar, you will see that at the moment, Varoro Pupille is a slow aria. But when you look at that exercise that Derek just did and said, can you sing that faster? Um, a lot of this work is related to the coloratura singing, right? Because understanding units of pitches as we say if you can hear it you can sing it that means if you really understand the patterns they come out of your mouth much more quickly so this uh, for those of you who are uh, planning to join us for the um, coloratura boot camp a lot of this stuff is going to come up again how do you sing a turn and how do you keep singing it faster okay so shall we sing the skeleton together of Adoro Pupis? yes we should sing the skeleton and then we should have people uh, uh off you go, Terry. It's like good to see you. So we have just the skeleton. So this is the bottom line, or the not the bottom line, but the second line, the handwritten line. Ready? One, two. <laughs> One more time through it, just and while you do it, imagine that this is your base for ornaments. So when you come back to ornament Vadoro Pupille in the da capo, 
you cannot ornament because it's already ornamented, right? So you have to see what is the baseline of this? What are the ornaments that Handel already wrote on top of his skeleton? One more time. One and two. Good. What should we do first? Who's up? Um, Jonathan Harris. And then Jonathan Crimmins and or Andy is up next. How about you sing in whatever octave you want? <laughs> Would you rather have a different octave or a different key? I don't know. I've sung it in this octave. Let's just see this octave. I'm not very warmed up. So sing in the lower octave and sing all upper appoggiaturas. Okay. Ma, ma do do pupile sette d'amore d'amore. One more time. Sing one more time just the skeleton of those four measures. Okay. Good. Now just those four measures upper portraitures. Good. Sing one more time. Pupile. I'm singing up upper portraiture. Pupile. No, Pupile. I'm, I'm making it up. Pupile. Pupile. There you go. Pupile. There we go. Okay. Okay. So if you, in the privacy of your own home, run into this little bump, what can you do? Do what we did before where you sing the main note and then the appoggiatura note. So, Vadoro, Pupile, Saete, Amore. Because then you're hearing it. Let's do that one time. Vadoro, Pupile, Saete, Amore. Keep going. Good. Now, think of that main note that you just found, but always sing the appoggiatura. The key is that your brain really needs to be hearing the main note, not the appoggiatura. So you're gonna you're gonna hear vado vado. You have to hear the resolution one more time. Vado. Can you tell me what notes you sang? You sang A, <laughs> B, um, and C. Uh, what notes did I actually time. sing, or uh, what notes did I think I was singing? <laughs> you, so you sang A, D, C. Damn sing one, one more time. Pupile. Pupile. Okay. Now just sing it with just the appropriate. Good. Now put. Put the first two, uh, two together. Madoro, pupile. Good, Ooh. keep going. Sate da more. Perfect, keep going. Good. 
to say. I don't know what to do with that one. The, the yes, the ender is complicated, right? Because that A itself is already, that A itself already is an appoggiatura because it's part of the 6 4 chord. Right. Yeah. So it's like, it's almost impossible with your ear to find an appoggiatura to that pitch because it's functioning as an appoggiatura. Yeah. That's so that. But not impossible. Not but impossible. Not, but good. All right. Uh, Mr. Crimmins. Man, it's Garland. Yeah. Crimmins and Garland. Garland. And Garland. <laughs> Yeah. Give me one more time. Do you want to stay in this octave? Yeah, same octave is probably the fun. Yeah, lower octave. You want to do the skeleton? Lower octave. Sing first the uh, skeleton and then sing lower portico. I'm. Is that. Wait, can you play it again? Sorry. The beginning. Yeah. Vadoro pupile saete d'amore le vostre no vostre fa sorry can you play the last line Le vostre favile son grate nel sen. Good. Good. Now, now between, between doing that and, and doing doing lower portico for us, give me five. Oh, Handel had a great idea there. there. And keep, keep going, going side. side. It's on his side. 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 So, so, so. so. Do I do it on here? Grate. Grate. Good. Now, can you do it without the skeleton note and it's only the lower portatura? Wait, without the lower portatura? Same skeleton before? Without the skeleton, but with the lower portatura. So we're taking out and only singing. Yeah. Vadoro pupile saete. So we can you you just sing Yeah. What we want to do is take out that first skeleton note which is do and only sing Right because the important part now has to be Vadorile. So what you end up in this case is in the second and third iteration, which is repeating the note into the second. Yeah, yeah. Vadoro pupile sae pupile. You must repeat that. Is that one? Yeah, pupile sae sae te. Ete d'amore. Yeah, it's like a half step. Time, time. It's hard. Saete d'amore. Saete d'amore. Good. Now, see if you can do that without singing the main note first. We can saete d'amore. <laughs> Sae, it's. I shouldn't be looking. I'm looking at the skeleton. Yeah. Sae, Sae, Te, Domore. Sing one time. Sae, Te, Domore. Four note turns. Sae, Te, Domore. 
good. Now, can you go back to the beginning and put those four notes turned on? Vadoro pupile saete d'amore. Good. Now, can you do the five note turns and we get vadoro? Well, these are five note lines. <laughs> these are. They resolve. Um, now, now, can you, can you do only the second half of that? that? Does that make sense? Which is what Which we were, were doing before. before. So, so if you sing Vadoro Pupile And so we get Vadoro Pupile Saete D'Amore Vadoro like a triplet, like the like... Uh -huh. any combination of Adoro pupile saete d'amore. Okay, so the so note that we are going eventually through your ear and it doesn't have to be fine is Adoro pupile saete d'amore. <laughs> yeah. It's so low for me, yeah? yeah. Can you sing one time? Saete d'amore. So I want everybody to notice something very important. Is that everyone's ears are guiding them to sing the right chromatics, the right accidentals because of the harmony. Your ears yeah. guide you to that. If you saw that written on paper, it would more than likely be stressful, stressful about like, oh, I'm not like, singing the right note. But, but if you think, think about how it functions ornamentally, it becomes a lot easier. Sing one more time, side. So for the studio audience, it's, it's D natural, A, B flat, D sharp. One more time, side. Good, now can you just sing side? Saete d'amore. Amore. Amore. Good. Now, can you sing the whole, the whole that's from Saete up? Yeah. Up the Sa octave. Saete d'amore. There we go. And that's a very handsome other half of your voice. And a little bit easier to hear it. Yeah. Good. Um, who else is here? I wonder if we should, because we're, we're I'm going to YouTube. I wonder if we should, I'm going to connect my computer and I wonder if we should play, just since we have done all of these, uh, let us do, you're going to call, I am going to, you can all remember these, right? So we basically have turns. What are our options? Or yeah, can you can remember those? And I want you to call. I'm going to stop this share. I'm going to share my iPad. And we are going to together make only one person. Okay, wait, what's happening? Share. Oh, there we go. And we are not going to care in this moment. So don't think, oh, this is a stupid idea, right? You are going to write, call out, call out or write in the chat. What is easier? Derek, tell us what works best. Everybody just unmute yourself and scream. Unmute yourself and tell me what ornament to write on the two Fs of Vadoro. And we're going to... Oh, you only get one chance, right? Everybody is going to call one ornament and we're going to have the first line of Vadoro Pupile Saete d'Amore ornamented. Put, I will put in the chat the options. The yeah? options, that would so, be great. Five note turn, or let's just put turn. Turn, right. Mordent, so upper or lower neighbor, which is half of the turn. Appoggiatura, upper or lower. Schleifer. Schleifer. Yeah, and uh, turns you have to say inverted or regular yeah so inverted turn or or regular okay off you go 
fastest finger or fastest person to to tell me? So how are we doing that ornament? Adoro. Tell us. Time is money. It's already eight o'clock. Schleifer. Okay, so I am going to write in one color because otherwise it takes too much time. Oops, sorry. And while I'm writing, Derek is manning the chat. We have Adoro. Next ornament, pupille. Anybody? Mordant. Mordant. Upper or lower? Let's say upper since handled. <laughs> since handled it lower. Kelly says upper. Did I see turn? A five note turn on side. Pop up. We could do something to D and B. Do we want to? Yes or no? What can we do on D and B? Obvious? Obvious is up. And passing or tones, passing turns. Here comes the passing turns. Okay, I'm here. Fill in, yes. What are, what am I writing on Namore? So if 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 we went da 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 ba da 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 that would be passing tones if we went ba da 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 ba da ba da 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 ba da ba da 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 don't overthink. Scream one of those things. This is the beauty of it. We're trying to show just how simple it in fact is. Mordant. Upper mordant. You, you know, you can combine them as well. I'm going to help. I'm going to say, how about appoggiatura and mordant? Okay. Catch my, catch my drift. More, more. Next. Le vostre. So we're ornamenting. Le vostre faville. Appoggiatura. We have lower five note from someone new. Lower five note. So we can put that on the next one. Le vostre faville. So like we have appoggiatura. Lower, I mean, you mean inverted, right? Yeah. G, G sharp. And then? Do we want to do anything with son? Yes, no. Lower Tricky. I mean, unprepared. We should talk a little at some point about unprepared appoggiatoras, right? Because this idea... This is what we call un, yes, Schleifer is a very good idea in big intervals, okay? Or, or another example of an appoggiatura would be singing Le, vo uh, le vostre favile son gra and sing A to F. Rachel up. wants a high appoggiatura.
Oh, sorry. Now you can hear. Okay, sorry. Okay. Great. So here we go. Derek is going to play and we are going to say, yay, that sounds great. Or maybe that asks for something else. Off you go. So the first thing I would say is I think that this uh, seems very bare after what happened before, right? Like, I would, let's pick another color. This is what I call like layering ornaments. And you're like, okay, maybe I can fill this out a little more. I don't necessarily hear a shot there. I could totally hear that as diatonic. What you can also do is play with the rhythm, right? So instead of just this, you could have something that is a little more like, how do I write it? like this, right? You can play with the rhythm. So you could do right? So you didn't necessarily, so that's what my feeling was like, there's too much like 16th notes that makes it sound kind of like a slow coloratura aria. This seems better to me. What shall we figure? Um, a mordant on top of this, maybe? Um, right. So that's already like a very pleasing start. And then if you're like, oh, okay, I think we need a little more turn, a little more this, a little more that, a little less more, a little that. And you see what, what we did was not complicated at all, right? We just used basically five things and random people picked random things. So if in your own mind, you're like, oh, my voice wants to do this. It feels like this would be a good way for it to turn then you come up with all these different ideas. So what we are doing tomorrow is we are going to play a little more with um, ornamentation and different ways to combine them. We're going to look at how composers combine them and we are going to combine them ourselves in more different uh, pieces. If you, you know, you have, we have six hours on you. If there is anybody on this call who's dying to look at ornamenting a specific phrase or a specific aria, email me at belcantobootcamp at gmail.com. And if I have time tomorrow during the day, uh, we will like prepare some of that to look at something specific. So if you have a request, please request it and we will do what we can to honor all requests. So. Today was a lot of review of uh, the tools that we need to use, and tomorrow is going to be practice. I thought she was going to say it was a lot of fun. Well, it was a lot of fun. I'm preparing for our podcast. It's yes, we're preparing. <laughs> we're preparing for a hey Phoenix. It's good to see you. We are preparing for our podcast. Uh, by this time tomorrow night, we would have met a whole slew of new young singers um, in South Africa, and we will be looking forward to seeing you guys again. Uh, it's great to see you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.